Coming? Coming! Chapman. Coming, see on Chapman? Chapman? Very good. Now, in closing, I'd like to quote Frank Capra. Don't compromise, for only the valiant can create. Only the daring should make films, and only the artistically incorrupt will earn and keep the people's trust. Good luck and goodbye. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, Penny. And thank you, Frank Capra, for those words of wisdom. Now, before I announce the nominees and the winner of the National Film Institute's 10th Annual Student Film Awards, keep in mind that these films were made by students without any outside assistance of any kind. In many cases, it meant reaching into their own back pockets. <laughs> now, in the first... Uh, Nominee is Carl Manknick for the trial of Janet Kingsley. And isn't it true that you were with him at the motel on July the 3rd? I have no idea what you're saying. I have never seen that man before in my life. Oh, really? Well, well, well. Do you know what I think, Mrs. Kingsley? I think you are a liar. No. A liar. No. Liar. No. Liar! No, you nasty man. Order. Your Honor, I object. This is a travesty. I motion. I motion for a mistrial. Order. Order in the court. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Mackney. Go on, go on, Dad. Take a bow. Take a. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Mackney. My agent for 20 years and uh, the president of the Mackney Talent Agency. Now, nominee number two. Jonathan Priestan Bennett for Cross Savers of Truth. On June 3rd, 1817, 10,000 men took the field of battle at Avignon. By the noon hour, only two were left to tell the tale. En général. thanks for this belated yet welcome recognition. <clears throat> I reserve my special thanks for one Jimmy Del Vecchio, special effects man extraordinaire, regrettably killed during the filming of Cross Sabers of Truth. Thanks should also be voiced to the Tristan Bennett Family Trust Fund for their intuition and good faith. Thank you. And now, nominee number three, Lydia Johnson. Oh, my God! Lydia Johnson for Afterbirth of a Notion? 
room. Chapman for first date. You must be Joey. Yes, sir. I suppose you have come for my daughter. Yes, sir. Do you play chess? A little. date, sir. You're not going anywhere! Ever again! <laughs> and the winner is... Why did you get this thing open? <laughs> oh, here we are. Here we are. Nick Chapman for first date. First of all, I would like to thank the Institute for this great honor. I'd like to thank my mom and dad for buying me my first camera when I was four years old. <laughs> I'd like to thank the cast and crew, most of whom were made up of my fellow students. I'd like to thank uh, Emmett Sumner, my friend and cinematographer, for his great images. He couldn't be here tonight because he's at a Lamaz class. <laughs> most of all, I want to thank Susan for being there when I needed her. Thanks. I like that dance you did a lot. No. Well. <laughs> You must be very proud of your son. Yes, yes. Uh, Nick, can I see you for a second, please? Yes. Hello, my name is Alan Hable. Hi. Uh, this is Lydia, Lydia Johnson. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, congratulations, oh, sweetie. Nice. Come on. See ya. <laughs> May I call you Nick? Yeah. Brilliance. Absolute brilliance. 
thanks. I thought your film had a very special quality, very unique. Thank you. I think we can work together. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, I'm completely available. Well, may I call you next week? Yeah. Great. All week, any day. Perfect. Call my secretary. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'll call you back. Okay. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Who was that guy? Uh, he's, he's from one of the studios. Oh. Speech for Mr. Chapman. Speech. 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 I would like to propose a toast to Emmett Sumner for his brilliant cinematography. Well. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Emmett, you tell Nick about your movie. What movie? <laughs> no, it's it's just it's this low budget movie this guy wants me to shoot. It's... Oh. What is it? It's this stupid movie. <laughs> it's called Coffins from Hell. <laughs> what is it about? Coffins from Hell. <laughs> it's great, Emmett. And it'll finally get him into the union. Yeah. So you don't seem so excited about it? Well, it's this piece of shit. I mean, there's no story, and it's incredibly violent, and I wouldn't want my kid to see it. So don't do it. Why compromise? Yeah, well, you make that sound easy. <laughs> well, sure, it is easy. You just got to do the kind of work that you want to do and stand by it. Well, yeah, I know you're right. Nick, we don't have the luxury to make that kind of choice. Yeah, Emma's been trying to get in that union for six years now. Well, that's no problem. We'll get into the union when he does my movie. Well, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, Nick. Congratulations. This is Gail Murphy with the IPF Talent Agency. I saw your film. It's marvelous. Nick, Herb Bebis, congratulations on the award. Uh, I love the film. Please give me a call regarding representation. Thank you. Hello, Nick. This is Shauna at the Cleanser Agency. Can you please give us a call tomorrow or at your earliest convenience? Thank you. Ken Friedlander, Friedlander Morris Talent Agency. Listen, I didn't get a chance to see the film, but, uh, well, I've just heard it's sensational, just terrific, just fabulous, and, uh, well, we ought to talk. Yes, party of two. One moment. Yes, sir? Hi, meeting Mr. Sussman? Yes, he's right there, sir. Mr. Sussman. <laughs> Mr. Sussman is my father, and he lives in Miami Beach. <laughs> It's Neil. Please sit. <laughs> now, my wife and I come here all the time, and I will tell you that the gaucho steak is wonderful. Okay, sounds good. Are those contacts? No. I would kill for that color. <laughs> I've always been stuck with Hazel. <laughs> <clears throat> Look, Nick, I'm not gonna bullshit you. I don't know you. I don't know your work. But I think that you are a very, very talented young man, and I'm never wrong about these things. Excuse me. Keith. Mm. Yes. Could I have another Cointreau and Sodi? And could you send an almond tort over to the gentleman in the white suit in the corner? Certainly. Look, Nick, I'm not going to bullshit you. Because it's a waste of time, and then it becomes like that thing. Oh. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. <laughs> I'll call you. I'm very, very aware that you are seeing other agents. And I think it's good that you are. Finally, I mean, it's healthy. But this is the thing. If you decide to sign with me, you're gonna get more than an agent. You're gonna get three people. 
You're going to get an agent, a mother, a father, a shoulder to cry on, someone who knows this business inside and out. And if anyone ever tries to cross you, I'll grab them by the balls and squeeze till they're dead. Excuse me. Keith, did you send over the torrent? Yes, sir. And, and, and what was his reaction? Well, he seemed pleased. But beneath the surface, I detected a certain sadness. Hmm. So, think about what I've been saying to you. Because I would hate to see you walk into Alan Hable's office with your pants down. Mr. Hable will see you now. Thank you. Are we in or out? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, just tell me, are we in or out? Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, yeah, well, because I can call Jerry right now. I mean, I don't want to call Jerry right now, but I will if I have to. Uh-huh. Look, El Elliot, please do not make this a nightmare for me, okay? Huh? Huh? Uh-huh. symbols, Nick? Well, yeah, I guess I do. Thimbles have a very long history, all the way back to the Greeks, maybe even before that. Huh. <laughs> Can I get you anything to drink? Uh, coffee? Cheryl, can we have some coffee, please? Would you tell Todd to come in, please? Yes, sir. So, did you grow up out here, Nick? No, I'm from Ohio. Oh, really? My first wife is from Illinois. How long you been out here? Almost two years. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> uh, just put it right down. Oh, uh, Nick Chapman, this is Todd Barman, my assistant. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Heard great things about your movie. Ah, oh, thanks. Is anybody warm? Uh, a little. <clears throat> Cheryl, would you turn up the air conditioner? Yes, sir. And hold all my calls. Yes. So. So. What's next? Well, I'd like to make a film. <laughs> well, you've come to the right place. <laughs> Tell me your movie, Nick. OK. OK, well, it, it's a love story. Uh-huh. It's a triangle, really. Oh, it's even better. Mm. It's about how people change for all kinds of reasons, but no two people do it at exactly the same time or for exactly the same kinds of reasons. I'm not sure I follow exactly yet. I, I, I think it'll be more clear when you, when you hear the story. Oh, shoot. OK, the whole thing takes place during a week spent 
in a country house in the middle of winter during a snowstorm. The three characters are Sharon, George, and Charlie. Now, while they're warming themselves by the fire, it comes out that Sharon had an affair with George in the same house the previous summer. Why didn't you tell me about this before, Sharon? I wanted to. I really wanted to. Hi. Hello? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just be a second. Uh-huh. Huh. Well, if he's making that kind of trouble, do we really need him? Uh-huh. Well, uh, then get rid of him. Are we still on for Saturday? Uh-huh. Okay. Sorry, we're making a picture in London, and everybody is just flipping out. <laughs> Continue. OK, OK. Now, Charlie can't believe what he's hearing. Charlie, Charlie, I wanted to tell you. I, I just couldn't. I... Nick, uh, can I interrupt? Sure. Do you think it would be possible to have two women Two women? Boy, it's really blowing up. <sighs> you mean two couples? No, no, no. I mean two girls and a guy. Huh. Oh, OK. OK, OK, so that would mean that Sharon and Charlie have the affair? No, 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 no. The two women would be having the affair. Oh, well, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really, I don't know. Well, I think you should think about it. I mean, there is something about two women together, you know? It's true. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's possible. I mean, <laughs> I, I know it's possible, but uh, I just, I Well, think really... about it. Could be a real interesting twist. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Mr. Habel. Mr. Fleckman is here. Oh, tell him I'll see him right away. I really have to take this meeting. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, I think we're off to a good start. Great. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks. Oh, by the way, my wife and I are having a party this uh, Saturday. We'd love for you to come. Great. Great. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye. You know, I really think it has to be one woman and two men. I think you're right. Because with, with two women, it's a, it's a completely different movie. I agree. You should tell him that. I will. I'll tell him that. Do you think it would be possible to have two women? Two women? Two women. Nick. Honey. 
Nick. Hi. Honey. This is my wife, Polo. This is Nick Chapman. Hi. Hi. And, um, Susan Rawlings. Hi, how do you do? Hi. Mindy, Quan. Come on, kids. Your father's talking to you. Come on. This is my daughter, Mindy, and my adopted Vietnamese son, Quan Da. Hi. Hi. OK. <laughs> Good kids. So, Nick, tell me, what do you do? Oh, Nick is a very promising director. Oh, nice. Nice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get you something to drink? Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, Sue. Honey? Tell me. What do you do? I'm a homemaker. Oh. She's an architect. <laughs> oh, I would love you to look at my house. I'm having the whole thing completely redone. Again. Oh. <laughs> so, we'll have a drink. Uh, spritzers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Two. Two. <sighs> Andres. Andres Vargiak, Nick Chapman. Oh wow! It's, uh, I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a big fan of your work. I've uh, seen every film you've ever shot. <laughs> Maybe you can get Andres to shoot your movie. <laughs> that would be, that would be great. Nice to see you. All. Nice to meet you. Excuse me. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure. Andres Varchiak, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> Gretchen! Um, I'll be back in a minute. Hi. Everybody, this is Gretchen. Uh, Susan, Polo, you know, of course. Welcome. This is Nick. Hi. Hi. Nick is a very promising young director. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, well, come on, Sue. Come upstairs. Let me show you what I did there. Come on, Sue. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> so are you uh, an, an, an actress? Yes. I'm on a series, but I'd really rather be doing movies. Are you making a movie for Ellen? Well, we're talking about it. That's great. Can you tell me about it? You really want to hear about it? Yeah. OK. The whole thing takes place in this country house in the middle of winter during a snowstorm. And when I say snowstorm, I don't mean snowstorm like a blizzard. And of course, his confidence going. Alan's ex put it in. You know, Miss No Taste herself. I started collecting fine art. I put in a bit of Christie's from Mark Chagall's David and Bathsheba. If it comes in, I'm gonna hang it right there. Mind if I tell you how much this house costs? No. 4.6 mil. Really? Mm-hmm. And change. Excuse me. Hello. Okay, so then Sharon and Charlie decide to go out into the snow and build a, build a snowman. Wait a second, I'm confused. So you have two couples then? No, actually, Sharon and the other woman would be having the affair. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that must have been Alan's idea. How did you know? Oh, um, that's Alan's thing. He just um, likes that. Uh huh. Uh. <laughs> what do you like? Sharon, no? Mm -mm. Not really. Think of me.
What's wrong? Nothing. I really liked your idea about uh, having it become two women, you know, and I've, uh, I thought about it, and I think it would be, uh, it would be, a, it would be a challenge to make a, a, a true love story between two women really, really work. Good. But. But what? But I really feel it has to be two men and one woman. I really do. Hmm. Fine, okay. Well, it's not that your idea wouldn't work. I mean, it's a great idea. It would definitely, definitely Nick, work. It's just that for Nick, this movie, Nick, I mean, Nick, the way Nick, I feel Nick, about the Nick. characters is... Nick, you can stop drilling. You struck oil. <laughs> okay, great. Terrific. But I do have a problem. <clears throat> What's that? Snow. But what about it? It's always snowing in your story. Well, it doesn't have to always be snow. <laughs> well, I don't mean snow. I mean the winter. It's depressing. Oh. What if <clears throat> it took place in the summer at the beach? Interesting. Well, <laughs> it changes the whole concept of the film. <laughs> well, I don't think so, not really. Uh -uh. The interaction among the characters remains the same. The only thing different is the location. Look what I found. Where? In the attic. Didn't even know there was an attic. We've rented this house for 15 summers. How come none of us knew there was an attic? Isn't that weird? Yeah. Let's open it. Hey, whoa, whoa, time out here. Nick, how old are these people? Early 40s. <sighs> oh, boy. What's wrong? Well, that is a bad age, Nick. I mean, the people who buy movie tickets fortunately or unfortunately, are between the ages of 14 and 24. Huh. So? So if kids want to see people in their 40s, they don't go to the movies. They go home, look at their parents. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I'm a little confused. No, no, no. You're not confused. It's nervous energy. You're excited. Really? Yeah. Damn straight. Now! <laughs> I want you to get out of my office and go write me a movie. <laughs> okay. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Gretchen? Hi, it's Nick. Nick Chapman. We met at Alan Habel's party. Are you on the left? Oh, well, actually, it looks like I'm going to be. I uh, just made a deal. They're going to let me write a movie. Congratulations. That's great. Thanks. I'm really, really excited about it. Well, let's see. Uh... Uh... <laughs> oh, um, I've been playing an undercover agent in Switzerland this week. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Would you like to come in my trailer while I take off my makeup? Yeah, you 
you know, that, that's very nice, but I, I should probably uh, get, get, get going. Hmm, that's too bad. Well, it was really nice seeing you. Yeah, it was great to see you too. I'll uh, see you around a lot. See you around. Nick. Would you like to come to a party with me on Saturday night? Uh, you mean Saturday night? Uh-huh. How about it? Taste it, sweetie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Huh? Yeah, it's good. It needs, uh, something. One of those herby things. Well, how about Saturday? What about Saturday? Are we on to bowling? Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. I'm working Saturday. Night? Well, yeah, it's a it's a party, but it's for work. You see, there's this actress that I met at this party, and she asked me to go to this other party, and she might be right for the part of Sharon, but I don't even know if I'm gonna go yet. I haven't told Susan yet. Oh, Susan is not invited. No. No, 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 because it's a, it's work, but it's a party. It's like a work party type thing. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? What would I do? Or, um, what would Jenny do to me if she found out? Found out what? <laughs> Come on, Nick. Aren't you asking me if I think you ought to get your oil changed? What? I'm gonna make the beast with two backs. Park the pink Mustang up a side street. Um, what? No, that's it. I'm out of colorful phrases. No, wait. What? What that, that... I believe you're saying that. Well, it's well, just a party. Oh, it's a party, for Christ's sake. Geez, that really pisses me off. You know, it's really sexist. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. My mistake. Do you guys need any love? What are you boys up to? Actually, I'm a friend of a uh, friend of Toby's. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just gonna. <laughs> Is that Chapman? I thought so. Jonathan, hi. What are you doing here? Friend of Toby's? Well, no, actually, I'm a friend of a friend of Toby's. How nice. What have you been doing with your time? Well, you know, this and that. Mm, nothing concrete, huh? Well, actually, I, I just made a deal. What, with? Alan Habel. <sighs> Welcome to the club. You have a deal with Alan? I have three deals, Chapman, at three different studios. Two to direct, one to executive produce. Oh, I'm also halfway through my novel. Huh. How's that cancer cure coming? Oh. Don't be bitter, Chapman. Nick, 
I know you went out. That was five hours ago. I went to a party. With Gretchen Gorman. Who's Gretchen Gorman? Susan? Don't come any closer, Nick, unless you want to walk funny for the rest of your life. She's just an actress, baby. She's a bimbo. She's an actress. A bimbo actress. A no-talent bimbo actress. A big, fat, no-talent bimbo actress with hair on her back and bad gums. I forgive you, Nick. I get jealous. Girls get that way. I... I love you, you big lug. You should have told me, Nick. Told you what? I just went to a party. It's not like I slept with her. Do you want to? This is stupid. It was an industry party, okay? Do you know what that means? Obviously, you don't. Obviously. So where'd you leave it? We left it a mess. I don't know. Everything's changing. People we barely knew in film school are calling him up and asking him for jobs. They're all telling him how talented he is. It's as if he feels he has to change to become the person that they're talking about. Have you tried beaning him with a rolling pin? No. <laughs> Works with them. Come on, let's buy you lunch. Okay. Why are you looking at me that way? What way? <laughs> you know what way. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, maybe I need to think about things. What things? Things, I don't know, things, you know, things like maybe we should be seeing other people. We, no, this, is, this isn't about we, Nick. This is about you, and uh, I'm not interested in seeing anybody else. So when you've decided to do what you want to do, you just let me know, okay? But let me know before you do it. I'm going out. Shit! God damn!
Gretchen here? No, she's not here. Do you know where she is? She went someplace with her boyfriend. Oh. thinking and uh, I just I don't think I can do this anymore so I'm leaving well, that's incredible because I was just just thinking the same thing I mean we can't we can't keep living like this it's But I think that I should be the one to leave. Fine. Leave. What do you do? I'm a director. You ever see Rocky Mountain Serenade? No. I directed it. That was Red Reardon's first picture. Oh. I made him a star. A big star. Then he turned around and cracked in my face. Literally. Mm-hmm. It's 1200 a month. I went first, last, and a non-refundable clean fee. Can I take this carpet up? I just put it down. Oh. Do you know who used to live here? No, I don't. Take a guess. Very famous. Um, Clark Abel? Nope. Guess again. I really... Ah, take a guess. Marilyn Monroe? Nope. Errol Flynn? Give up? I give up, yeah. Chuck Barris. The gong show guy. Oh. I've done a breakdown, and I see the whole film being shot in about eight weeks. That sounds right. Mm hmm I think you should put in a scene near the end where they all throw clamshells. I think that would be great. Yeah? I'm wondering, though, about... The lighthouse scene? I am wondering about the lighthouse scene, but I was referring to... The scene on the catamaran. That's my favorite. <laughs> no, but I love the catamaran scene. I think that should be shot right at sunset, so you get that golden, orangey... Miller time look. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, except it's gonna be in black and white. What's gonna be in black and white? The movie, it's in black and white. The whole movie? Every scene? Yeah. Well, Nick, if you shoot it in black and white, they're just going to colorize it anyway, so what's the point? <laughs> a lot of theaters don't even show black and white movies anymore. 
They don't have the right projectors. All the projectors are in color. It's true. That's not... How do you see music fitting in, Nick? Well, I was thinking no music. No music where? No music at all. What do you mean? You gotta have music, Nick. Well, you know, maybe some music here and there, just not wall-to-wall -wall music. Oh, well, who's talking about wall-to-wall -wall music? No, <laughs> what we're talking about are 15 or 20 good <laughs> pop hits here and there, you know, at most. Isn't that right? Right. Exactly. Well, maybe a couple of songs. Well, good. <laughs> now, you think about these changes, Nick, and get right into the rewrites. I think we have a movie. Oh, right. <laughs> it is so good, Nick. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, I was late, but the traffic was just <laughs> murder. Hey, it's it's good to see you, man. Really. Yeah. I'm sorry I haven't gotten over, but things have been oh. really crazy. With, yeah, with the, you know, it's this. the same thing at our house. Yeah. Like, with the baby and everything. Oh, right, right. How's she doing? Oh, she's she's just incredible. I mean, <laughs> we even got a nickname for her already. We call her Moochie. Oh, you're kidding? No. That's great. Listen to man. this. Check this out. Yeah. That's great. You believe that, great. bottom man? So where'd you get this car? I'm leasing it. <laughs> oh, did I tell you I'm looking at a house? No. Don't laugh. Don't you laugh. <laughs> it's in Beverly Hills. <laughs> I don't know if I can afford it, but I don't know if I can afford it, if you know what I mean. So what do you feel like doing? Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe we just drive around and talk sure, if you yeah, want to. Whatever we could, you want to get do. a burger. We can yep. grab a burger or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Whatever you want to do. I just thought maybe we could talk. Sorry. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, hold on a sec. I'm sorry, I gotta take this. Go ahead. I mean... <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, how's your rewrite coming? Rewrite? We start shooting in six weeks. Really? I fought for you, Emmett. I wanted you to shoot this picture. Nick, you know, you don't have to yeah, explain it. You were the only one. You were the only one on my list. Nick. Nick. Really? They're, they're, making, right. they're making me use Andres Vargiac. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> I know. He's great. But I wanted you. Well, here we are. Yeah, so we are. Well, uh, see ya. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll call you. Yeah. Ciao.
That was quick. Yeah. I thought you guys were having lunch. No, I guess not. Do you want to go see Daddy? Yeah. Oh, what about the film? <laughs> I don't think it's going to work out. Oh, Lucy, let's go make Daddy's sandwich. You going to help me? Nick, I am not going to dick you around because I have way too much respect for you. And I'm saying that not as your agent, although, God, that has given me an insane amount of pleasure. And I don't mean that as just some sort of showbiz bullshit, you know, where you actually hear talk in the street and then it becomes like that thing. What are you saying? I'm saying that your project is dead. What are you talking about? Anything that Alan was involved with is dead. Because whoever takes over the studio doesn't want blood on their hands. They want, with all due respect, to, to distance themselves from the stench. So just let it blow over. And then in a couple of months, you know, you'll come in, you'll sit down, and we'll have a really good talk. A couple of months, Neil? I don't have any money! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please, just, if you could just get me a meeting with the new studio head. If, if, I, if I could just talk to him. I'm sure I could convince him. <laughs> so, I'm convinced that all the commercial elements are all there, and the potential product has a definite demographic viability in a cross-profile package for the youth market. And beyond. Way beyond. Nick, I've always had major reservations about this. I know, I know, me too. Exactly. Lori, that is very perceptive. But, but, but what if, well, what if, what if we were to leave it at the beach, right? Only now, it's a bunch of college guys who are living in the house. They've rented it for the summer, and, and they're having this party, and suddenly, without anybody even realizing it, three stewardesses show up on their doorstep. Or the three stewardesses are actually ghosts. <laughs> and they've been living in the attic. Ghosts by night, stews by day, and, and they can be naked in the room. And the guys can't even see them. And, and like the bikinis are bouncing around without even bodies in them. Or. Stand by and watch them do this to you. Just not. I made a promise to love you no matter what. I want to be with you. And I want to hold you and comfort you. Until they see what I saw in you on that first night we met. Oh, that must be my agent. <laughs> was it better that time? Better, yeah. I was thinking you could... No, if I get this part, it's because of you. What about my movie? How's my mascara? Is it okay? Well, it's... Never mind.
Hi. Hi. Oh, I'll just be a sec. Okay. Oh, uh, Nick, I want you to meet my new agent, Carl. Yeah, we've met. Hi, Carl. Nick, I thought that was you. By the way, I heard about your uh, deal falling apart. Well, it's not definite yet. Oh, really? Well, it's not what I heard. Um, Nick, Carl and I, we have to talk. Yeah, uh, privately, if you don't mind. Do you think we could, um, I don't know, see a movie or something later? Um, uh, no, I think I might be doing something. But it doesn't have to take place at the peach. I mean, it really doesn't even have to be three stewardesses. It could be two stewardesses. It could be four stewardesses. And, and they don't necessarily have to even be ghosts if you're unhappy with that metaphysical thing, because it's really... Nick, what does the public, the general public, want to see? I don't know. I do. Here at Brown Entertainment, we take the scientific approach to movie making. Market research. Buddy pictures. They want to see buddy pictures. Now, who do you think are the two most beloved figures in American history? Beats me. Babe Ruth and Abe Lincoln. Hey, Abe, how's that bat coming? I want to hit me some baseball. <laughs> it's all done, babe. Yeah? Oh! Uh, she's a beaut. Thanks, kid. Uh, just make sure the Yankees win. <laughs> the babe for you. What do you think? Well, you know, that's a... That's a good idea. Good. Now, how much money have you got to invest? good. I see you're a director. Jimmy, our busboy's a director. I could start uh, today after 4 p.m. <laughs> you could start today if I needed a waiter today. I got 70 people on a waiting list. I'll tell you what. You give me a call in about, uh, about six weeks. <laughs> OK, Nick. Thanks. Stein? Hi, I'm calling to tell you about a brand new service which is available in your neighborhood. Mrs. Stein, how many times have you said to yourself, gee, my phone smells, but what can I do about it? A revolutionary phone cleaning service will solve this problem for you. Mrs. Stein? Hello? Hello?
I love you, Suze. I love you too. Hi, Mom. How you doing? How's the movie going? Uh, well, we, we had a little delay. Uh, we haven't actually started shooting yet. Well, everybody around here wants to know when it's coming out. Yeah. Well, um, tell them next Christmas. Oh, at Radio City? Yeah. Yeah, Mom, Radio City. Mom, listen, uh, I'm just on my way out the door. I've got a, uh, a production meeting. Could you just tell Dad that I said hi? Wait, uh, are you and Susan coming home for Christmas? No, we, um, I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to, to make it for Christmas. But, uh, but tell Dad I said hi, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Frankie. Another one. I can't serve you no more, Mr. Chapman. It ain't good for you. It's eating up your insides. Please, Frankie. P please. Just one more, just a taste. For old time's sake. I, I can't, Mr. C. You could when I was on top. I used to come in here with a broad on each arm and a bankroll that could choke a hippo. <laughs> You were my friend then. Everyone was my friend then. Whatever happened to that nice girl you used to bring in here? You know, the blonde. She was a nice girl, real classy. I broke her heart, Frankie. I broke it into a million pieces. Here you go, Mr. Seat. Oh, God. Your father in heaven. That's better. I'm not a praying man, but if you're up there and you can hear me, show me the way. Sign right there. Thank you. Susan Rawlings around. And your name? Nick Chapman. Yes. Will you tell Miss Rawlings there's a Mr. Chapman, Chapman to see her? Thanks. Her office is down at the end of the hall. you without that starlet sitting on your face. Careful, you're tracking in failure all over my carpet. Hi. Hi. Come in. Thanks. Nice office. I share it with a couple of people. Wow. Yeah, I, uh, I finally got some windows. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't open though. That's my next promotion. <laughs> Sit down. Thanks. Hey. 
thanks. So how have you been? Well, I'm a messenger this week. I was uh, making a delivery in the building, so I thought I'd come in and see how you're doing. So how you doing? Um, good. Yeah, things are going well. Have you seen Emmett and Jenny? Yeah, yeah, I saw them um, last night. Lucy, oh, she's so cute. She's, she looks like Emmett. Yeah. Without the beard. <laughs> you should give him a call. Well, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't know what to say. Well, I, I think he'd like to hear from you. So you seen anyone? No. No? You? No. You look great. I do? Mm-hmm. Really? Yes. So do you. Thanks. Well, I should probably uh, hit the road. You want to uh, see a movie or something sometime? Well, don't, you know, you can think about it. I mean, do think about it. You should think about it. I don't. Uh, I don't think I'm ready yet. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand. Um, that's only, that's, you know, yeah. Okay, well, it was, uh, it was great to see you. It was great to see you, too. I, I, I better get that. Maybe we can... Yeah. started about nine months ago. The young man was graduating from film school. So that's how I've been. Oh, Nick. That's the saddest story I ever heard. You should really feel sorry for yourself. Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> so what moral may we extract from all of this? Gee, Miss Crabtree, if I ever get another chance, maybe I'll do things a little differently. Maybe I won't be such an asshole again. You think that's possible? Thank you. You're welcome. Nice. Yes. Wow. This is gigantic. <laughs> you live here alone? As far as I know. <laughs> you want something to drink? A beer? Yes. So how long have you had this place? I got it right after school. It used to be an old mannequin factory. I fixed it up a lot. Good job. Boy, Nick, hasn't your agent been able to do anything for you? Oh, sure, he squeezed my balls until I was dead. <sighs> Thanks. Yeah. So you working? Yes. I, I, I have a night job. I, um, I round up those uh, shopping carts. They're left out on the sidewalks, you know? 
I am. I was thinking about doing a documentary about it. You know, the, the people that leave them there? Why do they leave them there? Are, are, are they making a statement about the supermarket? Or about society? You know, I, um, I interviewed a couple of them. <laughs> and the whole thing became so fucking boring that I um, gave up. <laughs> But, you know, I, I'm not depressed that I'm 26 and have no idea what I'm going to do with my life. Great! Do you want to meet my neighbors? Yeah. Let's go! No, I gave up video. I mean, to have radio performance art now. <laughs> they got any money? No. I'll do it. What do they call? They don't have a name. They, they, they need a name. They need a concept. Without warning, they found you With a crash and a cry of Sieg Heil and Bonsai They surround you You don't have powder to burn Make every shot count Listen good, it's time you learn Never to fire till you see the whites of The vendors, the thieves, and pretenders are waiting. And they know every type, and they know when you're right for the baiting. If you're not on your toes, they'll skin you alive. Evil lurks, the shadow knows, under the glint and the bows and the white. Murder out there. Listen good, it's time you learn never to fire till you see the whites of there. The whites of their eyes. That was Pez People, a hot new band from L.A. doing the whites of their eyes. It was directed by Nick Chapman. Our next video features a group that calls themselves Bideawe. They're from Rhode Island, that little tiny state, you know, in New England, Rhode Island.
I am. Well, hello. Hey, Luz. Hi, Lucy. Look what I got. Oh, hello there. Hello there. She's beautiful. You ought to get one. Oh, yeah. The timing is perfect. No girlfriend, no job, no future. Ooh, you can't pet rag there. I didn't fight for you. Yeah, I know. I want you to be my friend again. Nick, I was always your friend. No, I know. I mean... I want to be your friend again. your trip? Shit. Snowed. Here's your mail. Is there anything certified? No. How was your weekend? Yeah, I went to Santa Barbara, read 15 scripts. Uh-huh. I saw an interesting music video last night. Uh-huh. It was directed by Nick Chapman. Really? Was it any good? It had a quality. It was interesting. I mean, for a video. What group was it? I don't know. You don't know? I, I don't remember. I can find out. Do you want me to try and get you a copy of the tape? No, see if you can get him on the phone. Are you sure I can't help with anything? No, no. Everything's out of control. So what time do you have to be back at the office? Don't worry about it. When did you start cooking? Well, you know, I can't afford to eat out anymore. And about, uh, about a month ago, I heard this rumor that you could actually buy food in a store, uncooked, take it home, and cook it yourself. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw an article about that somewhere. Oh, you saw that? Mm-hmm. So have you seen the Pez People video? Uh-uh. I've been watching. I guess I keep missing it. Well, it's only been on once. Oh. But, you know, uh, Lydia has a copy of it if you want to if you want to borrow the cassette. Oh. Hello? Is this Nick Chapman? Yeah. This is Todd Marvin. I'm calling for Alan Havel. Yeah. Uh, hi, Todd. Uh, listen, could I... Can I call you back? Because I'm, uh... I'm kind of... In the middle of something. Sure. Thanks. Bye. Bye. What did he say? He said he couldn't talk. He was in the middle of something. Was he uh, talking on another line? I don't know. Huh. I wonder if he's already made a deal with somebody else. I could find out. Make some calls. See if you can find out who he's talking with. Sandwich okay? Mm-hmm. Do you want more of that? No, thanks. See, my secret is that I, I take the plastic off the individual slices before I put them into the toaster oven. Oh. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get that kind of special taste. <laughs> okay. You want some more soup? You sure? There's plenty. There's a ton here. Mm-mm. Mm. 
So what time do you say you have to be back at work? Don't worry about it. You want to take a drive? Sure. Where to? France. Hey, Nick. How's it going? This is Todd again. Listen, Alan needs to talk with you as soon as possible, so please get back to us. I discovered him in film school. Now I can't even get him on the fucking phone. That's typical. What's his name? Nick Chapman. I never even heard of him. I was a genius. So I recommended Dick Chapman for the picture, but I hear he's incredibly unavailable. Isn't it uh, Nick Chapman? I thought it was Dick. Could be Nick. You should see his new video. The latest one? It's the best one yet. And I've seen them all. Nick! Hi, it's your agent, Neil. Listen. There is an enormous amount of activity happening, so it's imperative that I talk to you, like immediately. So please return this call the second you get in, OK? Thank you. Nick, Todd again. Third message, you can reach me at any of the numbers I've left. Bye. Nick, this is your agent, Neil. Please give me a call. Donka. I can tell you what Nick wants or doesn't want because I happen to speak to the son of a bitch three times a day. Why am I yelling, Stan? Because nobody calls me a douchebag, okay? Okay, forgive it. But I will, I only hope that you remember, young man, that you are not the only person in this town who's interested in making a deal with Nick Chapman. The kid happens to be a genius. So just take a number, sit back, relax your crack, and I'll be in touch. <laughs> douchebag. Corky, try Nick again. Yes. Get me a reservation on the 12 o'clock flight to New York Friday. Okay. Call Rod at home and tell him not to use a shower in the bedroom until the plumber comes. Call Nick Chapman regarding beech nuts. And get me a pot of decaf. I think we may be too late. From what I hear, he's probably booked for the next two years. People are calling me asking how they can get in touch with him. It's incredible. I want to talk to him. Nick, Alan Hable. I've instructed my secretary to give you my home number. Call me tonight. Nick. This is Lori. Would you please call me as soon as you pick this up? Hi, Nick. It's Gretchen. I've missed you. Where are you? Call me, OK? Bye. Nick, don't even ask me how. The important thing is, I did it. <laughs> now, I have here before me five movie scripts, three TV pilots, a miniseries, and an opera. Now, we can take our pick. Now, I read almost all of them, almost all the way through, and frankly, I think the best one is the TV show about the black kid and the cop. It is very heartwarming and funny, and yet it has an edge, which is very intriguing. I'd like to do my script. Well, uh, Nick, I have to go on record and say that I think that you are making a huge mistake. Well, I want to do my script. <laughs> oh. 
Nick, do you hate me? Why do you hurt me like this? I have something perfect for you, and you slap me across the face with a dead fish. I'm gonna make my movie, Neil. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but, uh... You're making a huge mistake. Yeah, well, at least it'll be my mistake. <laughs> okay. Refresh my memory. The whole thing takes place at a country house in the middle of winter. <laughs> No good for you? Let's do it. All right. Full sound. Wait. Speed. What? And action. Thank you.